Hello, I'm Evangelist Gary Davis <clears throat> here for, for a very, very special prayer. There's going to be a lot of scripture reference here. You might want to listen to it the first time. You can go back through, read the scripture of the prayer and its contents. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. But I can assure you that, that there's a lot to discuss when it comes to praying over the United States of America. I thank you for watching this video. I thank you for sharing it. I, I, I really, truly hope that this video goes viral um, so that the Christian community can put the, the Word of God to work for them and understand their authority that we have over our country. <clears throat> reminders to God of his word that we can be proved right through it Psalms 119.49 remember the word of your servant upon which you have caused me to hope Isaiah 43.26 put me in remembrance let us argue together set forth your case that you may be proved right these are scriptures of us to discuss with God. We can argue with Him about what our belief is in what's right for us, where He needs to come in and save us, where He needs to provide a path for us, what we need to do to make all these things happen. And it starts with your authority over Satan. Okay? <clears throat> uh, there's going to be a few of you that want to comment about how long this prayer is, I want to remind you that in the Bible, Mark 14, Jesus prays in Gethsemane, and <clears throat> the mention of one hour to his disciples. Can you not stay awake for one hour while I pray? Okay, and then we go to Luke 6, 12, in these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. All night. Not five minutes. All night. One of the most impressive is John 17, 1 through 26, the high priestly prayer. This thing is awesome. Jesus spoke so beautifully to God. And it's an awesome, awesome prayer. You need to go read that. We need to be sure to put on the armor of God every day. As Christians, this is found in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Because we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. It's a spiritual warfare. God gives us his armor, the armor of God, to protect us. Satan, take notice, you and your entire kingdom. We will put on the armor of God, and it will protect us, and it will give us a defense, and it gives us an offense as well. Take notice. Binding the strong man. Satan, you and your entire kingdom, take notice. Right now, according to Matthew 12, 29 through 32, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Scripture says, Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he is first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Satan, according to Scripture, you are bound right now. You and your entire kingdom. Unity and prayer. Satan, take notice. You and your entire kingdom. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. 
Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That means, Satan, that we bind you in Jesus' name on this earth. According to Scripture, in heaven you are bound there as well. You are bound. Take notice. Healing, praise, and anointing. There are so many people out here that are lost. They're just absolutely lost. Christians on where their authority is over healing and the praise and the anointing through the blood and through our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. James 5, 13 through 16. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? We're all sick as humans. We're all sick in the flesh. This should be a daily thing of anointing. Ourselves even. For the healing that we need through our Lord and Savior, through God and through the Holy Spirit. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. You don't need to go to Facebook and post out my aunt has cancer and she's dying. I need prayer. Because a lot of those prayers, I'm going to tell you, people don't know how to pray. God, let your will be done. If it's their time, just go ahead and take them. No! You speak authority! You have that authority. Use the scripture against that illness or that death or that that accident or that injury people that have lost their minds they're, they're being tormented by evil it's a spiritual thing all the Xanax in the world is not going to heal them but when you speak the word of God over that illness I promise you you're going to drive out those demons away from that person and they're going to be healed they're going to be healed Blessings for obedience. Deuteronomy 1 through 14. 28. Chapter 28. 1 through 14. You need to read this. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All of them. And all the blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle. The increase your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket. And your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. And blessed you shall be when you go out. You need to read this scripture. And put it to work in your life. We don't have to settle for just enough. Because God is ready to fill your cup. He's ready to fill your barns. But I'm going to tell you, if you're going to the bars every other night and then trying to go to Sunday school and trying to go to church and trying to ride the fence, it's going to be a hard, hard road for you. You've got to choose a side. You're either all in for the world or you're all in for God. One of the two. Being a true Christian... You need to read these scriptures yourself. Romans 12, 14 through 21. And then we go on to the next one, which is John 13, 12 through 17. Here's a beautiful, beautiful story about Jesus Christ. 
when we had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You called me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, Blessed are you if you do them. Why are we not washing one another's feet? Why are, are, are the church people not being servants? Why are we not being servants to each other? Trina and I have been to 15 different cities in the past six months. Not one time in that through revivals, through, through ministry, have we been invited by a church to stay at their church in our RV, to hook up to their utilities. We have to pay our own rent. What's wrong with that picture, people? We're out trying to find the lost sheep in the world while you shepherds stand behind your pulpit worrying about the clock Worrying about the tithing money. Supposed to wash one another's feet. We're trying to build up the kingdom. We're trying to unite with churches. And churches are turning us away. And Christians are refusing to come speak. Because we speak in the spirit. Because we use anointing oil. Because I'm not as rich as you are. I bet that impresses God. I bet it also impresses Him to know that churches come and they benefit from our works and we walk away to the next church empty-handed. Something wrong with that, people. That's not unity. That's not unity. God has provided for us for the last two years without your help and he's going to continue to do that but let him bless you by helping to bless us to help bless the world this is a one-of-a-kind very awesome ministry one-of-a-kind and as long as you sit there and you let satan rule over your church house and let your congregation rule over what you do up there in the pulpit. And let your mind worry, well, uh, we really need to receive tithing instead of dismissing church to go to a Holy Spirit-filled revival. Are you kidding me? Your church should be active in that. They should be inviting people to come. Don't you sit in that pulpit and put God in a box when it's convenient for you and then let him out when you want him to be free. God's not going to work like that. He might for a while while he's trying to convict you of some things. But I can promise you it's going to come to an end. It's going to come to an end. Another good verse is 1 John 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets had gone out into the world. Let me tell you something, people. There's times where I ask God something in prayer. And I will wait for a week, two weeks, e even longer, if, if need be, to get that peace, that check in my spirit from God on what I'm supposed to be doing. It took nearly three weeks putting this scripture together for this prayer. It took a week for God to give me the peace to start it. 
I, I, I try to be as obedient as I can to what God's telling me. When I'm up here and I'm talking to you, I usually have to go back through and watch my video again because I've missed about three quarters of it. Because it's not me that's talking. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through me to touch you. But I can tell you, I get touched just as much by watching it again when I've missed something. I'm like, glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for telling me that. Thank you. What is Satan's authority over the earth? John 14, 25 through 31. <clears throat> Specifically, verse 29 through 31. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. The ruler of this world is Satan. He builds up his kingdoms. He divides towns. He divides families. He divides countries. He's all over the world. It has taken time for him to build those kingdoms. It's going to take time to destroy them. But I'm going to tell you something. When you put the word of God to work in your life, and then you spread it to your neighbor, and you spread it to the other neighbor, I'm going to tell you, walls are going to crumble. People are going to rejoice about what God is doing in their lives. How he is restoring families back to peace. How he is healing marriages to last forever. Till death do we part. But you got to put the word of God to work for you. What authority do we have over Satan? Satan, I'll put you on notice right now through Scripture, Luke 18, 18 through 20. And he said to him, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Isn't that awesome? God gave Adam and Eve the authority in the garden. He gave them the authority. I give you authority. Jesus had to remind us again. I, I, I give you the authority. Everybody keeps forgetting they get, they get the authority when they become a Christian. But now they're not going to use it. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Binding Satan. Satan, you are on notice right now. You and your entire kingdom. We use the authority of Jesus Christ to bind you on earth. And that the authority of Jesus Christ is hereby granted in heaven as it is written in Matthew 16, 19. I will give you the kingdoms, uh, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, whatever you bind on earth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. If we're going to loose Satan, to rule in our lives, expect a kingdom of Satan's to be built in your life. He's going to put up four walls around you, and he's going to keep you there. But when we bind him, when we bind the strong man, the ruler of the earth, when we bind him, when we bind him, heaven hears that. And says, yes, we agree he is bound. It's free will, people. You can either bind him or you can loose him in your life. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promise you that if you bind him, heaven will hear it and he will be bound through the blood of Jesus Christ. He has to obey. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
But if you're going to turn him loose in your life, expect your marriage to fail. Expect your families to be separated. Expect your home to start falling apart. Expect all these things that God does not want for you to happen in your life. Here comes the prayer. God, we come to you over the borders of our nations, our state, our counties, our cities, towns, properties, and families. According to 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. It's very simple. Psalms 33, 8 through 12. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. There are no longer the chosen people of Israel. It's for Jews and Gentiles alike. White, black, Indian, Mexican, Chinese, it doesn't matter. We all belong to God. We are all his children. Go look it up in 2 Timothy 4. You belong to me, says God. You belong to me. You are mine. What more could you ask from God than for him to outright claim you as his child? Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God in our country, the United States of America. Our next topic, our neighbors. Galatians 5, 13 through 15. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor. You shall love, love being the one word, your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Look at what's going on in our country. Your neighbor is not just the person living next door to you in your house. Your neighbor may be three states away that you come across. You love everyone. Love them. Even if you have to love them from a distance. God understands that some people cannot be loved up close. He knows that. <coughs> Mark 12. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Where do we get our strength from? We get our strength from God. That's where our strengths are at. That's where the power is. That's where the authority is. That's where Satan has to be bound on this earth as he is bound in heaven. We get that from God. Jesus Christ gave us that authority. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
And the second, like it, is this. Again, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. If you do those two things in your life, if you will dedicate every single day to God, not just Sundays, not just Wednesday night, not just three minutes on Easter, but if you will make him a part of your everyday life, every day, that one thing that God requires of love will happen in your life. When you are loved, you are blessed. When you are blessed, you do not do without. When you don't do without, you have no needs. You don't have needs of the world because God loves you. He loves you regardless of where you're at in your relationship with Him right now. But he does want you to come closer. I don't care if your relationship is an hour a day or ten hours a day. He still wants more of you. He wants to be in every decision. He wants to be in every need. He wants to be in every seed you plant. He wants to be in all the time that you have to wait after that seed is planted. And he definitely wants to be in your life for the harvest to make sure that there's no thorns and thistles, that it's a, a, a massive, major crop that you're harvesting from the seeds that you're planting with him guiding the way. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the Word of God from our neighbors, our families. 1 Timothy 5.8 But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Ephesians 6, Children and Parents Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Your fathers, do not provoke your children with wrath or to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the abomination of the Lord. Hebrews 13, marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. You've got to take a stance, fathers. Dads, you have to lead your family. It starts with you. It starts with you, mom. If you're a single mother, guide your children in the ways of the Lord. And God will bless you. Single dads, the same thing. I was a single dad for a long time, raised three kids. Their mother passed away in 2000. I was left doing it on my own. God provided every need. When I didn't see him, he was there. When I cried out to him, where are you, God? He had already fixed my problem. I just didn't see it. Because... Back then, I put God in a box. I depended on me and the world until me or the world failed. And then I ran over here and unlocked this and let God out. It's all about letting God work full time in your life. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the Word of God from our families. You are bound. Our mothers, Proverbs 31, 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, 
her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Moms, I'm going to tell you, if you're reading bedtime stories out of the Bible to your children, God sees it. If you're just putting them off to bed and, and thanking God that they are no longer up being little holy terrors, i got to tell you, God loves it when you read the Bible to those children. Do not hinder the kids from coming to me. The little children, do not hinder them. As their parents, if we want them to grow up to be children of God, and to love God, and to trust God, and to have faith in God, then we need to set the example. I can tell you I have failed that in my life. But the beauty of it, I understand where I went wrong as a father and as a single parent. And I've given God the authority over my children. They might be my kids. They're not God's grandkids. But they also belong to God. They are also His children. They are saved. They are baptized. God, I give you full authority over my children to protect them, to look out for them, to guide them, to lead them in every way possible. Where I failed, God, I know that you can restore. Give that authority over to the Lord. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our mothers, our fathers. Ephesians 6, 4. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and abomination of the Lord. 1 Timothy 5 and verse 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our fathers, from our dads, from those who are struggling to be good parents. We bind you in the name of Jesus from our fathers, our grandparents, and our elders. Titus 2, 1 through 19. Or, I'm sorry, 1 through 10. But as for you, speak the good things which are proper for sound doctrine, that the older men may be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands. That they teach the young women to love their husbands, to stand by them and to support them and to help edify them as the head of the household. Don't tell them it's all right to walk around with their butt cheeks hanging out walking down the street. Their body is a temple. They're more valuable than precious pearls that you have to dive deep into the ocean and rip apart a clam that is protecting them. They're better than fine gold that you have to dig deep to find. Let their men have to dig deep through God to find them. Then they will be respected. Then they will be truly loved. Make the man work for it. Don't just give him the cow. Or don't just give him the milk. You know, make him take the whole cow. Sorry, I kind of get tongue twisted every once in a while. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech, 
that cannot be condemned, that one who is an op opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their masters, to be well pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God and Savior in all things. Proverbs 17. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children is their father. Psalms 145, 4. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our grandparents and our elders in the United States. You are bound here, you are bound in heaven. Our children, Psalms 127, 3 through 5. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward from God. The fruit of the womb. Our children are a gift, are a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Proverbs 6, 20 through 22. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake the law of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will lead you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our children. You are bound. Satan, you are bound. You release the clutches of our children in this country. In Jesus' name, our private, public, and church schools. Matthew 19. Then the little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid hands on them and departed from there. Satan, in the name of Jesus, you remove your clutches from our children. You get out of our schools right now, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I command you, tear down your kingdom. Tear down those walls. Tear down the, the peer pressures of being a Christian right now in Jesus' name. And you are bound from touching our children. You are bound from being in our schools. You release your stronghold right now. In Jesus' name, you are defeated. In Jesus' name. Our churches, our church buildings, our churches, our churches. 1 Timothy 5, 1 through 2. Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father. Younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, and younger women as sisters with all purity. Romans 12, 3 through 8. For I say, through the grace you have given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. <coughs> Excuse me. For as we have many members in one body, that's the church in the body of Jesus Christ, but all the members do not have the same function, so we... Being many are one body in Christ. He's talking about unity. Unite with your brother Christians. Reunite, unite with your sister Christians. Unite and, and start finding the lost sheep and bringing them back home. And preach the word of God when you're up in that pulpit. And let the Holy Spirit flow. Tear down that clock in your congregation hall. Get rid of it. Take your watch off. 
Time is not important to God. When we are trying to touch the body of Christ or a new believer or someone who has never believed in their life, let the Holy Spirit work. You're not going to do it. The Holy Spirit will do it. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Glory to God. That's what it's about. You use your gift. Don't you let a non-believer, if you don't believe speaking in tongue, then you don't believe in the Bible. You're not going to tear that apart like a Happy Meal. You're not just going to go after what you want out of it. If you believe in all, then, then you need to use all. If you don't have the gift of tongue, then Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God did not give you that gift. You have another gift somewhere else. Maybe it's interpretation. Maybe it's being a member of the church and working in a daycare. Maybe it's being a music director. Maybe it's being in the band. But use that gift that God has given you. And use it with authority. Don't let Satan tear you down from that. <clears throat> Having then gifts differing according to the grace that it is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1 through 10, or 1 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you perfectly join together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Tell you something about religion. The Bible does not teach religion. Jesus Christ, the body of the church, the body of the church is not divided into Catholics and Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostal and Southern Baptists. People, there's one Bible. There's one Bible. There's one holy temple where we all reside. It's the same thing. We are all to speak it. We are all to believe it. We are all to encourage from it. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our churches. I understand that there's going to be people allowing you in there, but if one person has faith with me in this prayer, you are bound from that church in Jesus' name. You have no authority inside the walls of that building while that preacher is in the pulpit preaching. You are bound in Jesus' name from that church with one other believer, including me. According to the word of God and by the authority of Jesus Christ, you are bound from that church. Tear down your walls and exit. Tear down your walls and exit in Jesus' name. You start to tear down your own kingdom, Satan, according to the word of God. Our leaders of government, this ought to strike somebody funny. We are supposed to stand behind our government. 1 Timothy 2, 2 through 7. Therefore I exert first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and who all who are in authority 
that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Romans 13, 1 through 7. <clears throat> let every soul, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, but if you do evil, look at the United States. Look at the world. Everybody's doing evil. Be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of the wrath, but also for the conscience sake. For because of you, because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's, ministering, attending, continually do, to do this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to who customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Acts 5, 29 through 32. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. We find more verses. I want you to go check them out. Judges 2, 16 through 19. Psalm 75, 7. Daniel 2, 20 through 22. I want to read that one. Daniel 2, 20 through 22. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness, and light dwells with him. God already knows all the evil things going on in our government. But I'm here to tell you, brother, according to Scripture, we have authority over those things to be brought to light. And we use that authority right now. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our government and our leaders of government. I bind you. In Jesus' name you are bound. I command you to begin tearing your walls of your kingdom down now in the name of Jesus. I bind you. The light will shine on our government, on our leaders, on our supporters. The light will shine in Jesus' name. Our jobs, Ecclesiastes 9.10, Colossians 3.22-25, Satan, 
you are bound from our workplace. You are bound. You are bound. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are bound from the workplace. You will not hinder raises. You will not hinder production. You will not hinder those hands. You will not cause injury. You will not, I repeat, you will not continue to steal the paychecks of hardworking American citizens. I command you in Jesus' name right now to tear down your walls around our employment, to tear down your walls around our, our employees and our brothers and sisters in Christ. I command you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that authority over Satan. Thank you for the authority, God. Our possessions. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. I'm going to tell you people right now, when you see a ministry that is in need, you should be helping them. I don't care if it's a nickel. I don't care if it's $500, $5,000, $50,000 or a button in the offering plate if that's all you got to give. But you give God some glory and you give God some praise and you help unite the kingdom in any way you can. Even if you have nothing, offer up to help them in some other way. They might just need some help writing, writing a newsletter or, or anything. But when you allow Satan to talk you into, well, I only got $418,000 in the bank. I don't need to even give $2 of that. I'm going to tell you, God, God sees it all. He sees it all. He sees ministries crying out for help that are trying to glorify him. He knows who's sitting on their pocketbook trying to hide out. He knows. Just keep doing that. This ministry, even though we don't receive from you, we still tithe to churches. We still give love offerings. About a week ago, we had an apostle come through where we're staying at the RV park. We fed him. We gave him enough money to cover his night's rent. And we fed him again the next morning before he left. That's what being a Christian is all about. That is where you get so many blessings from God. God knew this man was coming. Prepared a little bit of extra dinner. Didn't know why. Had to go get ice. First time since we've been in this RV. Had to go get ice. That's where we met him. It was awesome. Led by God. Satan... You and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our possessions, which belong to God, and you are no longer authorized to steal from them any longer in any way, shape, or form. You are bound. You get your hands off of God's property. You quit misleading people that they don't need to help. You keep sending people that they can help. God, we thank you for sending out the ministries that are fighting the battles out here on the battlefield. God, we thank you for those. And God, we ask that you bind Satan, that you reverse the wealth. God, that you begin the reversal of wealth. That you bless the ministries out here in the open battlefield. God, that, that, that they have every need met with more than enough, more than they need, more than they can stand, God, to help other people. We thank you for that. Our food sources restored in abundance and nutrition. Psalms 85, 4 through 7. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not re revive us again? 
that your people may rejoice in you. Show us. Show us. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. You go read another one in Lamentations 5, 19 through 22. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our food sources. You get your hands off. You and your entire kingdom are on notice right now to get your hands off of our food sources. Our food sources are provided by God. They are full of nutrients that our body needs. They are full of nutrition. They are full and satisfying. They are full and satisfying right now of God's love. Command you right now, Satan, bound from our food sources in Jesus' name. Religious barriers. Mark 7, 1 through 13. <clears throat> now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they washed their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. Holding to the tradition of the elders. The Torah. Religion. 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 Break down those walls of religion and go to Christ. There are no religions inside Jesus Christ. We are all equal. We need to come together. We need to unite in the body of Christ. Christ being the key word of Christian. We are to be Christian in the body of Christ. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do you disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, the, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines, the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. People, break down those barriers of religion in your lives. Unite as one. Unity. Again, man's laws do not supersede God's laws. God's love should not be divided. Religion is division of the church. Religion is division of the church. It's a barrier. It's a stumbling block. Let my children come to me. Do not hinder them. Religion is a hindrance. Wake up. Mark 16, 14 through 20. And then again in Titus 3, 1 through 11. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from dividing the church any longer through religion. You will no longer commit any division among the church body of Jesus Christ. Satan, you are bound Religion is no longer a barrier for people wanting to come to know Jesus Christ. You are bound in Jesus' name from dividing the church any longer, Satan. And that's enough. You are bound, you and your entire kingdom, in Jesus' name. Our preachers, ministers, pastors, evangelists, deacons, prophets, elders, leaders of the church, 
Matthew 28, 16 through 20. The Great Commission. This is where people lose sight of, of where their authority is in the church. The Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of age. Jesus didn't say, well, you guys are only capable of doing part of what I did. No, he says we have his authority and we will do what he did and more. Because he's going to the Father. We are seen as Jesus Christ when we approach God and we pray to him in Jesus' name. He doesn't see us. Evil does not see us. They see Jesus Christ standing there when you are binding them. When you are commanding them to tear down their walls of the kingdom of hell. It's Jesus Christ they see. They're going to obey him. Use your authority. Amen. The sting of death is sin. 1 Corinthians 56 through 58. <clears throat> 56, 1. No, hang on. Skip that one. Ephesians 3, 7 through 12. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. People, this is a good work. Our country is in turmoil and chaos caused by Satan. And he is having this country in turmoil and chaos because we are allowing it. We are not using our authority. 2 Timothy 3, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped, for every good work. Let's go a step further. 1 Corinthians 9, 11 through 14. If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share the rightful claim on you, do not we even more? Nevertheless, we have not made us made use of this right. But we endure everything rather than put an obstacle in your way of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't command you to tithe to us. We don't command you to, 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 to donate to our ministry. We don't want that stumbling block. I've written seven books. Seven! Through God's will. Every single one of them have been kept free of charge. Because we do not want a stumbling block. But some of you people need to get up off your duff and write a check to help this ministry. To help other ministries like it. To help your local church. To make sure that your church is taken care of. That your church building is not falling apart around you. Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service get their food from the temple and those who serve at the altar 
share in the sacrificial offerings in the same way the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living from the gospel. If you people out there are going to sit on your money while we're out spreading the gospel and doing the things that the Lord commands of us, shouldn't you be doing the things that He commands of you? That's what unity is all about. There's a lot of people that is not going to give up their life. They're not going to give up their home. They're not going to give up their belongings. They're not going to give up their families. They're not going to give up their friends to get an RV and go traveling all over the country trying to get people saved and trying to bring people to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They're not going to suffer 18 hours a day trying to get books out and get, get them out in the public view. They're not going to make sure that Facebook has a post every hour on the hour to feed everyone that's looking. This ministry does that. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our preachers, our ministers, our pastors, evangelists, deacons, prophets, elders, leaders of the church, that glorify God. If they bring glory to God, you're bound from them, Satan. You're on notice, you and your entire kingdom. You break down those strongholds around that church. You break strongholds around those people. Satan, you are bound from any Christian that glorifies God. You are bound in Jesus' name. Armed services and law enforcement, members past, present, and future. Romans 13, 1 through 5. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our armed forces and law enforcement, members past, present, and future. You are bound. Court systems. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 6, 1 through 11. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our courts. Same-sex marriages. Boy, I know I'm going to get an outpour on this one. It doesn't really matter. Losing licenses over refusing to perform these marriages. Genesis 1, 27 through 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God did not make Adam and Steve he made Adam and Eve. When it is allowed for a gay couple to cast a preacher out of a church and him to lose his license and him to lose his C-103 nonprofit organization status, there's a problem of Satan getting into the church. If they want to go marry each other, that is their free will. But they do not need to force that upon the body of Christ, the believers of Jesus Christ, the believers of God the Creator who created Adam and Eve. They cannot multiply two men or two women. Man and woman is what multiplies. Satan, take notice. Romans 1, 26 through 32. Genesis 2, 18 through 25. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from forcing same-sex marriages upon the preachers and teachers of the word of God and placing forceful measures that go against God's work through these vile acts against God's chosen. Satan, you are bound those laws are to be destroyed. 
your threshold is yanked out from under you, Satan. When it comes to same-sex marriages, you will not, you will not hinder the works of the Lord for your own pleasure, for your own satisfaction. You are bound in Jesus' name. Large economic crushing corporations, Luke 6, 24 through 25, and Luke 18, on down to James 5, 1 through 6. I want to read that. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you have kept back by fraud, are crying out against you, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from hoarding the splendor and finances of God and the church in the body of Christ. Behind greedy men, we declare that the wealth of the wicked is released unto the righteous beginning today. In Jesus' name, Satan, you begin to destroy those bank accounts of the rich and wicked. And that money is released to God's children. It is released to the righteous beginning today. Satan, those walls are crumbled. They are destroyed in Jesus' name. Sickness, disease, injury again. James 5. Use it. Put it to work. You have the authority. You can bless the oil. Isaiah 53, 1 through 5. And we keep going to <clears throat> the end of that one. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our bodies and minds. Through the stripes of Jesus, we declare that we are healed. We declare that we are healed. Folks, right now, I want to invite you to go look something up on the internet after you finish watching this. Joseph Prince, the anointing oil. That's your search. I want you to read what Joseph Prince has to say about the anointing oil. Just a totally, totally awesome, awesome explanation of the oil and how sacred and how valuable it is and how to use it and, and, and how to bless it. You're going to love it. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our bodies and minds. Through the stripes of Jesus, we declare that we are healed. That includes every form of sickness, every form of disease, every injury. Everything was taken to the cross, Satan. In Jesus' name and by his blood, we are healed. By the stripes on his back, I bind you from sickness, disease, injury, mind-altering anything of God's children. I bind you right now in Jesus' name. Christian persecution and torture killings. People, if you read your Bible, you can quit asking, why is all this taking place today? It was written down thousands of years ago that this was going to happen. John 15 18 through 27. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they, persecute, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. 
If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without cause. They hated me without cause. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our brothers and sisters that you may have in bondage. We declare that they be set free in the name of Jesus. And furthermore, we declare that you cease and desist in your maneuvers against any of God's children. Satan, you are bound by the blood of Jesus Christ. We draw a line. We command those chains to be broken from our brothers and sisters who you have locked up, who you have in chains. We command you right now that those chains are removed in Jesus' mighty name. Riots and chaos. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Ephesians 4, 25 through 32. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from stealing from our country and possessing one against another that brings shame to this nation and defiles the word of God. We declare only glory to God in every street of our nation. Peace we declare over every inch of our country and land. In Jesus' mighty name, we command you to release and assist and back off and tear down all of your need for riots and chaos. They are no longer tolerated in this country. Tear down your walls, Satan, and go home. Go back to hell. Go to hell where you're going to be for eternity. Tear those walls down, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I command you. Racial discrimination. This is a huge thing in our country. God does not see black, white, brown, yellow, purple, pink. He sees the heart of every person. This ministry sees the heart of people. It doesn't matter their skin color. It doesn't matter their problem. It doesn't matter if they're homeless. It doesn't matter if they're drug addicts. It doesn't matter if they're whores. It doesn't matter. We're out to save all of them. We're out to be a blessing to give God glory for what he can do in a lost sheep's life. Amen. Genesis 1 through 27, or Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. I'm going to tell you, people, I have seen God the creator's image on the earth and the many images that he takes on. And it's absolutely awesome. Acts 10, 35, 34 through 35. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Religion, 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 Religion causes discrimination. Religion divides the church into black and white and brown and yellow. If we're living as a Christian, there is no racial discrimination because there is no race. We see the heart. Stop it. It's easy enough to stop. Just love one another. Colossians 3, 5-11. First Samuel 16-7. through 7. <clears throat> And I want to read First Samuel to you. But the Lord said to Samuel, 
do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from every ethnic group known by man. And we declare that we are all equal in the eyes of God through our hearts. Skin color has no effect against one another in our country any longer. As Christians, you better be uniting with me in these prayers. They are backed up with scripture and they are by the authority of Jesus Christ. Abuse and neglect of animals. Proverbs 12:10. Whoever is righteous has regard for the life of his beast, but the mercy of the wicked is cruel. Psalm 36, 6, your righteousness is like the great mountain. Your judgments are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. Psalm 145, 8 through 9. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all of his works. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from our animals and their abuse and neglect throughout the entire country. You are bound. Release them in Jesus' name. I command their owners to be taking good care of them, to stop fighting them, to stop abusing them in Jesus' mighty name. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. This is one that you need to go read yourself. 1 Thessalonians 5. You need to read that whole chapter. Do not quench the spirit. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from attempting to destroy or cut off sermons commencing through the Holy Spirit. We declare that you will not use time or lack of as a measure to halt or hinder in any fashion the word of God. Satan, we, we, we break that stronghold of time in our sermons. You are commanded to bow at the feet of these ministers and preachers and teachers in the pulpit. You are bound from using time constrictions in detailing and, and depicting and, and trying to authorize the, the sermon that is taking place. In Jesus' name, you are bound, Satan. You are bound. Destroying the kingdoms of Satan throughout the entire country. Luke 10, 19 through 20. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen through 15. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from building up your kingdom in any territory of this country. Furthermore, you are commanded in Jesus' name to tear down any and all strongholds that you have in this country and on its people. Through the blood and authority of Jesus Christ, we command you to flee. Your walls are destroyed, Satan. Your kingdoms are crumbling to the ground. You are bound, Satan. You are bound from our pulpits. <clears throat> Giving God authority over our children, parents, grandparents, and own lives. Talked about this earlier. Here's the scripture. 2 Timothy 1, 12. Acts 20, 32. Philippians 1, 3 through 11. <clears throat> Jeremiah 1, verse 5. I want to read that one. Before I formed you in the womb. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1, 5. 
Satan, you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from hindering their relationship of our children, ourselves, grandparents, leaders, elders of our nation with God the Father in heaven. We belong to God and we are adopted in his family through the blood of Jesus Christ and him being our personal savior. You are commanded to release the chains that bind the children from coming to you, <clears throat> coming to God. Satan, we destroy those chains of any child, regardless of their age. We command you to release those chains right now so that they may seek after God, so that they have the freedom to go to God. You are bound in the name of Jesus Christ. Restoration to the rights of Christians. Isaiah 43, you belong to God. Our last revival about five weeks ago was titled just this Isaiah 43 you need to read it you need to apply it into your life you need to understand that God is your father and that you belong to him Satan you and your kingdom are bound by the word of God from hindering the Christian church in the body of Jesus Christ you are commanded to release any and all strongholds that you have in the Christian community and unity of the church in any fashion in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Healing our entire nation. James 4, 1 through 10. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder, you covet, and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, to spend it on your passions. Your adulterous people, You do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore... Whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. No wonder the country's falling apart. Everybody's wanting to be friends with Satan. Therefore, it says, hang on. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be rigid and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Awesome. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Isaiah 1, 19-20 you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land but if you refuse and rebel you shall be eaten by the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken unity of believers in Christ Jesus Ephesians 2 11 through 22 and then we have Philippians 2 1 through 17 Revelation 12, 10 through 12. <clears throat> I want to read that to you. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him 
by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they have loved not their lives, even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Satan, through the blood and the authority of Jesus Christ, we command you to get behind us and tear down your kingdoms that you have built over this nation. You are commanded to be bound as you have been bound on this earth. So shall you be bound by the word of God in heaven. God, we thank you for the authority of Jesus Christ, and we loose the angelic forces, the ministering spirits, to minister on behalf of the heirs of salvation according to the word. God, we thank you for the strongholds that you place against all evil in our country, and that you, that the healing, the healing God of your word, begin to work in our lives this very day and continue until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We lose love among the people of our land. We lose the miracles and the miraculous healings of our land. We lose good quality food to flourish in our fields. We lose the truth of your word to be spread throughout our entire nation and then to the far reaches of this earth. We loose the chains of religion in our communities. We loose unity throughout the church, God, in the body of Jesus Christ. We loose the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We loose the healing of diseases, plagues, illnesses of every kind throughout our entire country. We loose the captives caught in the grips of Satan we loose your word, God, to rule over our entire country, including the poor and the rich alike. We loose the blessings of family restoration, family guidance, and that the children are lo no longer hindered in any fashion from coming to you, God. We loose the financial blessings. We loose quality time made available in our lives without suffering to spend with you. We loose the time during sermons with you to allow the Holy Spirit to do his good works in our lives. We loose the blessing of finances and growth to this ministry and other churches that glorify you. And when we loose the blessings to reign in heaven upon them with more than enough, God. We thank you so much for that. Cups overflowing to reach all ends of the earth with your word, God. We lose healing on the bruised. We lose healing on the brokenhearted. We lose eyes to be opened. We lose lips to speak of you, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We lose deliverance on those who seek deliverance. We lose ears to hear your word, even from afar off and through the midst of and the most important of all, God, we loose your love on our nation, its land, its governments, its peoples, its children, and all that you possess, Lord God, in our nation, because we know that your love, God, will conquer all that is evil. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, God, and we all said, Amen. I want to thank you for watching this video. I want you to visit our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash God's Art and Word. You can email us with any questions at info at God's Art Ministries.com. We, we welcome everything, but I can tell you if you're sending blasphemous or hateful emails, they'll be deleted. Uh, without